so, so good. Hey friends, welcome back to another monthly freezer meal prep. We are gonna get some things put into the freezer today to help us out this coming month. Just some quick meals, things that'll be ready really fast and grab and go stuff. So the first thing we're starting off with is a meal that I'm actually going to multiply by three. So we're gonna get three of these put into the freezer and that is some orange chicken. Now the way that this recipe is done, they actually cook the chicken beforehand and make the sauce and then freeze them in separate bags so that you get more of a saucy chicken and it's not absorbed into the chicken when you cook it, if that makes sense. So I actually have six pounds of chicken diced up here and each recipe calls for two pounds. I've got my skillet on about medium heat and I actually just have some avocado oil here um, in a spray bottle that we're gonna just spritz the pan with as we're frying this stuff. All I'm going to do is fry it in the cast iron with some salt and pepper and we're gonna do it in batches until all of it is fried up. While it's frying, we'll go ahead and we will make our sauce and we are multiplying this by three, like I said. So I'm going to be making the sauce three times. I think I'm going to make it individually three times so that I know for sure I've got a whole recipe of sauce in each bag. So this meal I will be reheating in partially in the air fryer and partially in the skillet. You all know how much I love using my air fryer to reheat stuff. And so what I'll probably do is pull out the chicken, put it in the air fryer, get it nice and crunchy again. And that's part of the reason for frying this in batches because I want a little bit of brown on each piece of chicken. And then I will put the sauce into the skillet, heat the sauce up in the skillet. And then as the chicken is crispy and done in the air fryer, dump it into the sauce in the skillet and you've got a great orange chicken dish. And then I'll probably stir fry some veggies and make up some brown rice or make some fried rice to go along with it. And it'll be a fast and easy meal where everything is almost ready. And if I really want it to be super fast, I can even just do some steamed veggies and a packet of quick rice if I really want it to be. Um, this is a favorite of ours. We love orange chicken, so I know that I'm good with making three of them. We can use it over the next month for dinners or lunches. Our chicken is frying. I've got all of the ingredients out for the sauce. I'm going to be freezing it in a smaller bag than I will the chicken. So we are going to go ahead and mix up the sauce. So we've got about a fourth cup of water here. And I'm going to add to that, I should probably shake this. I'm going to add about a half cup of orange juice. Like so. Okay. And I'm going to leave everything sit right here because, like I said, we're going to do this three times. So then to that, we are going to add a tablespoon of soy sauce. And instead of soy sauce, I am using coconut liquid aminos. Tastes almost exactly the same. In fact, I actually like the taste of this a little better. It has a little bit better flavor, um, but it does not have soy in it. It's a good alternative without soy. And we're gonna do about a tablespoon of honey. I am not gonna put that into a measuring spoon because it's just gonna get really sticky. And then we're also gonna do a tablespoon of rice vinegar. I actually get um, rice vinegar, organic rice vinegar from Azure Standard in gallon form. I haven't had an Azure Standard order in a while, but when you buy a lot of stuff in bulk, sometimes you don't have to get stuff for a while again. All right, we're gonna do a fourth teaspoon of sesame oil. And the next Azure Standard order I get, I need to get black sesame oil, because that is very good as well. And then we're going to do a teaspoon of cornstarch. And if you can find non-GMO cornstarch, that's the, the healthiest option. 
And then we are also going to do a teaspoon of minced fresh ginger. And I actually make these little cubes and freeze them. So I am going to say about two cubes is going to be about a teaspoon. It smells so good. I used to hate ginger. And then I started cooking with a lot of like Asian flavors. And now I associate the smell with dishes that are Asian inspired and oh, they're so good. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on my chicken back here. It's getting close to the point of pulling off. I just wanted a little bit of that browning happening. Um, so I'm just letting it sizzle. And that's part of why I'm using the, just the avocado oil spray, because if you've got too much oil going on, it doesn't brown as easily. So I'm just using a little bit at a time. We are going to want about a teaspoon of garlic. So I'm guessing probably around two cloves of this size um, is gonna give me about a teaspoon. And I have my little mincer here. I'm gonna just mince that up and put it in. And that cornstarch is gonna help the sauce to thicken up a bit whenever I pull it out of the freezer and I am cooking it up in the skillet before I dump it in, like I explained earlier, before I dump the chicken in to the skillet after getting it crunchy in the air fryer. Okay, I love my little rocking mincer here. It works so well. You just press and push it through and it's so easy to clean compared to a lot of the mincers where you squeeze it. I used to have one of those for years and it was just such a pain to clean. So I'm just gonna take my knife inside there and grab the minced garlic. There you can see that browning, that's what we wanna see. You wanna catch it before it gets dry though. You don't wanna dry out the chicken, but if you watch it carefully, you can grab it before that. It doesn't this look like it's gonna be delicious in an orange sauce? Oh, you can already taste it for sure. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and spritz over it again. And I'm gonna lay out the chicken pieces in one good coat over the skillet. I can lay them pretty close together because they do shrink up a bit. And I do wash my fork in between working with the raw meat and the cooked meat. <laughs> Always careful with chicken. My mom was always that way. And chicken is just one that I definitely make sure everything is very sanitary. I'm just going to spread it all out. Dump it on. Just spread it in an even layer. Now that my pan is a little bit hotter than the first batch, I think this will fry up pretty quickly. Also taking some mineral salt, adding that over everything, and then some black pepper. Okay, I've got my little curly whisk. I love this thing. You can get them on Amazon. I'll try to remember to leave them linked below. And I'm just going to really whisk it well. I'm actually waiting for, to see my garlic, I mean ginger, cubes dissolve in here. And I think that they are, I'm seeing little yellow pieces. So there we've got one good batch of sauce made up. One of the perks to doing 
meal preps and kind of planning out what you're gonna make for your meal prep is you can make the best use of your time. So I'm actually getting ready to pop something in the oven that needs to be baked while I'm still frying the chicken up for the orange chicken. We're gonna have another meal type freezer meal in just a minute, but let's get this in the oven first. So since I had this all planned out, I can whip together this lemon loaf while I'm waiting. Whereas if I were just making a dinner, I probably would not have all the things on hand to go ahead and make my lemon loaf and just a win-win all around. So I'm just going to put some parchment paper in this. A lot of you know that I eat very low, whoa, <laughs> that I eat very low sugar um, just for some health reasons I need to. So this lemon loaf is very low sugar friendly. I'll leave the recipe linked below and I'm going to bake it up. I think it has a glaze also that goes on the top of it. And I am going to be able to lift it out very easily, which is gonna be important for this recipe because what I want to do is slice it and then freeze those slices so I can pull out a nice little lemon loaf piece with my coffee in the morning. Oh, I can already taste it. I'm so excited. I love lemon loaf. Haven't had it for a while. So we're gonna start out by putting things into the mixer here. I'm going to use two cups of almond flour in this recipe. Ooh, so it's also gonna be full of protein to where I will have a protein. It could be like a breakfast with a nice um, collagen coffee or something like that. As you guys know, I like to put collagen in my coffee in the morning. And then I also have some coconut flour. We're gonna do about a fourth cup of coconut flour in this as well. Okay, we're putting half a teaspoon of baking powder in here. And then we are gonna do three fourth cup of your favorite sweetener. So it could be cane sugar, it could be whatever you want. I have a monk fruit sweetener mix here. And I'm just gonna grab three fourth cup of it, put it in. I have a stick of butter that I melted in the microwave, so I'm gonna grab that, but I have a half teaspoon of exanthin gum. And I'm still back here making sure my chicken is doing well. And before I put this melted butter in to here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of mix up the dry ingredients that we have in here. Just going to take the whisk off, make sure it's all combined very well. And then we'll start adding in the wet ingredients. Okay, so we've got our half cup of butter, which is one stick of butter that we're gonna put in. Butter makes everything better. <laughs> and then we have four eggs. They're gonna go in here too. My sister-in-law just got some little chicks and I am a little jealous. We need to get some chickens. We said last year that we would get some. Still hasn't happened, but I have plenty of people I can get my eggs from. Now I've got two third cup of sour cream. I'm gonna put that in here. That's gonna help the loaf be nice and moist and ooh, just a yummy, lemon loaf, not dry and crumbly. I'm gonna put a little bit of vanilla in as well. And then calls for a tablespoon or two of lemon juice. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then it also calls for lemon extract, but instead of the lemon extract, I'm actually going to go ahead and zest a little bit of this lemon rind. Make sure we don't get any of these seeds in here. These are big lemon seeds. Must have been a good healthy tree. <laughs> okay, 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead, put that in there, and then I'm gonna grab my box grater. I'm just going to take the other side of the lemon and just use some of that rind. Okay, I feel like we need just a bit more, so I'm gonna use the other side of the lemon. Zest it up. Lemons are always so much harder to zest after you've juiced them. <laughs> They're not nice and firm like they were. There, we've got more seeds flying out, man. All right. Take the zest out of here. Oh, my kitchen smells so good with all of this lemon stuff going on. Just going to place the batter in here evenly. And I have the last batch of chicken frying in the pan, so everything is moving along smoothly. I like how this recipe, sometimes when you're working with stuff that's low sugar or specialty recipes, they don't fill pans very well, but I do think this is going to be a very nice size loaf, which has me excited. I've made like flavored loaves like this before where they've come out kind of flat and not really very sliceable. And this one, I can tell from the size of the batter, I think it's gonna turn out really well. So we'll pop this in the oven. My oven is preheated and we will get on to our next recipe. All right, so while that's in the oven and we're still frying the last little bit of the chicken, we're gonna work on another freezer meal. I've made this before, um, but it's something, anytime there's cutting things up involved, I feel like that just takes a lot of time when it comes to preparing meals but we are going to make some freezer fajitas. So we're gonna take these bell peppers, we're gonna slice them up, we're gonna get some onion, and then we are going to dry rub chicken strips. And this is going to be a raw freezer dinner. So the one we just made obviously is not completely raw. The, I have not found that I like one better than the other. It just depends on the recipe of what works best. Oh, this smells so delicious. I haven't had a yellow bell pepper in a while and oh, it just smells so good. I love how each color of bell pepper has its own distinct flavor and it makes it so fun to cook with them. But what I will do is put these into the freezer. When I get them out, I will let them thaw and then I will just put them in a skillet with a little bit of olive oil and I'll fry up everything until the chicken is completely cooked through. And then all I have to do is get some toppings, which most of the time we have everything on hand just because they are such similar toppings to a taco bar or something like that. And then I just need some flour fajita tortillas and we have dinner made. So even if it's a busy day, you know, and I am running errands or something, I can easily grab anything that I need to finish off building fajitas. And I can also make up rice very quickly to go along with it too. But the majority, the bulk, the hot food part is done mostly for me and I'm not trying to cut up this stuff <laughs> all in one evening. I am giving these slices a little bit of thickness just because that's how we like it. I don't want them to get too soft putting them into the 
fajitas. I like just a little bit of crunch there if I can manage it. So we are going to do three meals of the chicken fajitas. Again, I don't know if we will eat all three of these in one month, um, but we'll see. It could end up being an easy lunch along the way too. But even if I don't, I know that next month um, we can easily pull this out as well. So I feel like three is a pretty safe number when it comes to multiplying the same meal. I feel like it's a nice amount to get done at once. If you're already doing chopping up for one, you might as well do three, <laughs> but it's also not going to be repeated too much in a month or two time. That's actually a question that I do get pretty often is how um, quickly should you use your freezer meals? Um, how long do you keep them in the freezer for? And I would say for the most part, most things I like to try to get used up in a two month period at the most three month period when it comes to these types of meals. I just don't think that they do that great beyond that, unlike freezing um, individual things like corn or green beans in the summertime where it can last up to a year in the freezer. When you have a lot of different ingredients going into freezer meals, they just, I don't know, I think that they get freezer burnt a bit quicker, to be honest. I'm just grabbing two good sized onions to divide between these three meals. I did leave my mixer out because we are going to be using it for another recipe yet. And I think it feels so good to have multiple things going at once. You know you're getting a lot done at one time. All right, I'm just going to, whoops, do some thin slices here. will get tucked in. With the bell peppers. I've also done purple onion with this as well. That's another option you could do. It's really good, it has its own flavor. Okay, I've just got three large freezer bags. I'm going to label these and I'm going to just eyeball and divide out the peppers and onions. The yellow, and I'm gonna be honest guys, I like to make my freezer meals look as nice as possible. So when I go to the freezer to pick out a meal, I feel like it looks appetizing, <laughs> even in the freezer. Our visual visuals are so connected to making us hungry or putting us in the mood to eat something. And I feel like I've learned that a lot. My husband is very that much that way. If something looks good, then he wants to eat it. And so, I've tried to even put that in to my meal preps as well. Trying to get an even distri distribution <laughs> of the colors so that they have a nice mixture in our fajitas. And thank goodness, bell peppers are something you do not have to blanch before you freeze them. So it works out great and onions are the same, same way. Speaking of Husbands, that is another reason I love to meal prep is because there are times whenever I'm busy and it's just easier for him to make a meal. So if it's partially prepped, he doesn't have as much to do. Um, it just makes it really convenient. And my daughter, my oldest daughter is actually getting old enough as well 
to be able to grab things that are prepped or semi-prepped and making them up too. So if you have teenagers in the house, that might be helpful as well. All right, we're gonna stick our onions in here and then we'll get the chicken out and start slicing that up. Okay, so I'm just going to put slices in this bowl and I have about the same amount of chicken um, that I did for the orange chicken. So it's roughly six pounds or so. And we're just going to put it into slices because that's what we prefer to have in our um, fajitas. It's like more like strips. Now these will probably be made in the cast iron skillet, um, but could also be put into our smoker slash grill on the cast iron skillet. Um, it just depends on what else we're making or if we're making anything else with the fajitas. Sorry if the lighting is a little in and out this afternoon. The clouds keep kind of hiding the sun and then it comes back. So I'm gonna try a little bit of a different method on coating this chicken. Um, the last time I made this, or other times I've made it, I've kind of made my spice blend in the bottom and then I stir it, but it still seems to get kind of clumpy in the chicken and I really want it to be more like evenly coated. So I have chili powder, garlic powder, cumin, and then I have salt over here as well. And I'm going to just sort of take and sprinkle some across the, the chicken. And then I'm, I'm going to take this big spoon and I'm gonna stir it and then kind of sprinkle it again, see if I can get a more even coating. All right, and then also the salt. I'm going to stir it around and then repeat the process. Probably repeat it three or four times, depending on how much seasoning I get in here. I obviously don't wanna over season it either, but I think this is going to get it coated pretty nicely. Alternately, you could totally use a fajita seasoning packet. I just prefer to use my own seasoning so I know there isn't very many additives put into it. So you could totally take a fajita packet or even if you don't have that on hand, taco seasoning mix also works really well too for fajitas. Okay, same thing I did with the veggies. I'm gonna use this hand to touch the chicken so I can use this hand to touch the bag, but we're just going to divide everything out very evenly in our Ziploc freezer bags. And then we're also going to bag up the orange chicken as well since it's cooled down some. I think it's good enough to put into bags. Definitely think this is how I'll be coating the, the chicken from now on when I do this freezer meal because it w is way more evenly coated than my previous methods. <laughs> and our lemon loaf is also about ready to come out of the oven, which is perfect because we are going to mix up something else to put in the oven to keep it working hard too.
All right, so I have a few strawberries left from the strawberry season. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and make up a strawberry muffin recipe so that we can enjoy them for another month, even though they're really coming to a close here in central Pennsylvania. And like strawberries that are in season, the flavor and the juiciness just beat out the strawberries that we get year round in the grocery store. They are just so red and so delicious. So I'm just dicing up these. They are kind of small, but that means they're really tasty usually. And I'm just chopping them into little cubes or diced, I guess. And we're gonna need about three cups of these. We are gonna be doubling this recipe. This is a recipe that can be gluten-free. I'm gonna be using gluten-free flour. You don't have to, um, but it can be. And then we're also going to use some cane sugar on the top just to give it that extra crunch and texture on top. If you guys are new, muffins are one of my favorite things to freeze. They just freeze so well. They hold their texture and their flavor so well um, compared to some other baked goods that may not thaw out quite as nicely. Muffins just tend to thaw out and I can even get them out the night before, sit them on the counter, and in the morning they are perfectly fresh and ready to go for breakfast. They make great afternoon snacks. My daughters always are asking me what I have that's baked in the freezer. And so muffins are a great um, thing to give them that is a baked good, but it's not quite a cookie usually. <laughs> All right, so I have some sugar here that we're gonna put in to the mixer. Like I said, I am doubling this recipe um, and we'll see if we like it. I had requests for blueberry muffins, which I did in one of my last preps, but I decided to swap it out since I have a lot of extra strawberries right now. So, got the sugar we have a cup of melted butter and then it was cooled so it's not hot melted butter and then we are going to put in some vanilla and we got about three I mean sorry six eggs because we're doubling it three for each recipe And I promise I didn't try this, but somehow both of the baked items I'm making today have sour cream in them. <laughs> so these get a half cup per recipe. So a whole cup of sour cream. I feel like I need to scrape what's left in there. The alternative to the sour cream is you can use plain yogurt if that's what you have on hand. All right, now we are gonna do three teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half for each recipe. And then we're also gonna do two teaspoons of baking soda. I always remember to put the lids back on these as soon as I'm done using them because they look so similar. I do know how to tell one from the other. One is a little more, I don't know, shiny I guess is the right word and the other one is dull and one is has a little bit more of a shine to it so we're going to do two of the baking soda I'm going to mix together what we have so far
All right, I almost forgot the salt in this, which would not be good. So we need a teaspoon of salt. We'll mix this up and then we're gonna add in our flour. Okay, if you've watched often, you know that I really like the King Arthur's gluten-free flour and we do not have a gluten allergy in our house, so I do make some of both types of recipes, but because my one daughter is gluten sensitive, I try to make a lot of recipes, or the, um, the ones that I can make gluten free that are pretty unnoticeable. Muffins are a great way to do that. So we are gonna do four and a half cups of flour. This is probably gonna max out my mixing bowl. Now we are gonna fold in the strawberries. So those I will, I'll take the mixing bowl off to fold them in. But let's hope for, let's hope it doesn't poof all over me. <laughs> Go slow. Okay, this is a great looking batter. Very happy with how this looks for muffins. We are going to make sure the bottom is scraped out. Yep, looks good, okay. Just gonna shake this off. Now, I'm not going to put quite all of the strawberries in here because I want a few to press into the tops of the muffins so that it's pretty obvious that they are strawberry muffins. Um, strawberries can sink a little bit, um, but I think it'll work great to be able to press them into the top. The recipe suggested that, and I am going to go with that suggestion. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to dump in most of them, leaving a few for topping. Ooh. This just looks so delicious. Look at that, oh, so good. So just going to fold these in. Probably gonna get some pink swirls in here too, since these are so fresh and juicy. All right, I'm gonna get out my muffin tins and my muffin papers and get these in the oven. All right, I'm going to just take a little bit of coconut oil spray over the edges so we got an easier cleanup. And I'm gonna do something to the top of these like the recipe actually suggests, and that is put some of my large granules, large grain cane sugar on top to give that little bit of crunch. And I actually had to ask my mom, for those of you that don't know, my mom grew up in a bakery and she works in food now and she has worked in food for a long time. She's done specialty catering for years and got a lot that usually, she has a lot of wisdom and usually I can call her when I have questions about recipes or how to do something. So I wanted to know if it's better to put the sugar on before you bake the muffin or after. And she said definitely before is perfectly fine. So that is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna kind of make these look very fancy <laughs> by putting strawberries on top and then also using the raw sugar to sprinkle over them. I'm gonna get a smaller spoon. I like to work in smaller portions when it comes to filling muffin or cupcake tins. I feel like I've got a little more control over the situation <laughs> whenever I have a spoon. Honestly, there's a lot of strawberries in here. Maybe it's the size I cut them, but I do think these are gonna have strawberries on top of them, even without me. Um, putting some on top. They seem to be well distributed.
All right, so we need just a bit more lemon juice to make our glaze on top of the lemon loaf. And I think it's cooled enough to do that. So we are going to add about a tablespoon of this lemon juice to a cup of powdered sweetener. This could be powdered sugar. This is a monk fruit powdered sweetener. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna put a tablespoon of this in here. And then I'm going to put about two tablespoons of water and we'll try whisking that together and see what the consistency is like. So I just have my whisk here. I'm just going for a nice like thick glaze. And I'm actually gonna taste this because I might put a little lemon um, zest in this as well. Let me just taste it and see. Ooh, I like that consistency. That's perfect. So we'll give it a taste. Mmm, that is really light and refreshing, but I definitely want to add a little lemon zest. And we're back to the same problem of a cut lemon <laughs> and trying to zest it. If you add too much, it will get bitter. So I'm definitely just going on the lighter side here and then we will taste it. I just love the way it looks in there too. All right. Oh yeah, perfect. It's not 100% cool, but it is mostly, and this did get a little darker than I would have liked on top, but um, I actually had it in for less than the recipe or like the lower end of the timing on the recipe, so I don't know. But I think what I'm gonna do is put the glaze here on top, and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator so that the glaze can sort of harden a little bit on top so that everything is perfect. Oh, this smells so delicious. Then we'll be able to slice it and freeze it. Actually, I might just pop it right into the freezer. That probably will help it harden on top a whole lot quicker and finish cooling. And I'm keeping it in the pan so that as the glaze cools, it all just stays on more on top because it'll stay inside of that parchment paper liner. Okay, we're gonna put it in the freezer for 15 minutes or so and we'll check on it. All right, so I cleaned up a bit while I was waiting for these muffins to cool down so we can put them into some freezer bags. And then I have my lemon loaf here. I haven't tried lifting it at all. Ooh, all right, it came right out. I didn't know if I was gonna have to try and pry it out. It looks so good. Oh, I cannot wait to have a piece of this. I'm really excited about it. I'm just going to take it off of the parchment paper to slice it. It does look just a little bit on the dark side, but I'm hoping that the inside is nice and yellow and keeping it in the cold fridge or freezer helps it to be easier to slice. Ooh, looks great inside. Okay, I'm gonna give myself some nice slices so that if I want to have it for breakfast, it's a good size for like a nice small breakfast. I'm so glad I put the lemon zest in this because it definitely amped up that lemon flavor that I was looking for. How perfect does this look? I've gotta try some right now. I don't know if I should take an end piece <laughs> or a middle piece. 
I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do a middle piece because that just looks so good. Spot on. So, so good. I could seriously take a bath. I'm sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full. But I could take a bath in this glaze. It is so good. There is the zest in it. Mmm, so good. I almost feel like I need to stop and make myself a cup of coffee. This is delicious. One of the reasons I love muffins so much for freezing is they're already in their own little portion sizes. They freeze super nice, but something like this lo loaf, lemon loaf, um, you need to be a little more tedious in how you prepare it to freeze. So what I'm going to do is take small amounts of press and seal and wrap each loaf slice so that they don't stick together otherwise I'm gonna have one big block in the freezer that I cannot um, <laughs> separate so we're gonna take one slice at a time here and I'm just going to make kind of individual little packages and then lay them flat inside of the freezer bag so they don't have to be like wrapped up tightly like a, um, you know, airtight or anything, but just having that wrapped around it will help them to not stick together and it will also help them to not crumble. Um, just because they are a loaf that's made with almond flour and sometimes that can cause things to crumble but they are holding up pretty nice, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like they're very uh, moist and dense, probably with that sour cream that made them that way. So I'm just using the smallest little slivers of my press and seal to wrap these up. I'm gonna have to give um, one or two of these to my mom because she also eats fairly low sugar or tries to and I think she would really enjoy this. All right, whoop, I just lost the garlic clove on the floor. <laughs> the next project I have here for the freezer today, I categorize more as a pantry stock up. I'm gonna grab a bowl for some of the skin and other little discards we have. I use these all the time, and you guys have seen me prep them quite a few times. <laughs> And I'm in need of restocking my freezer, even though I kind of count this as more like a pantry item, a staple item. And what that is, is pre-minced garlic. So it's usually a little bit of a process and funny little tidbit about me, something, a kitchen task, I just despise. I don't really know, well, I know why. It's because it's usually in the heat of the moment but I really dislike peeling garlic. It is just one of my least favorite things, especially when I'm in the middle of trying to whip together a recipe. Having to peel and mince garlic just seems like you know, a whole affair you have to stop cooking for. So I like to take a bunch of it and I get these big bags of garlic from Costco when I can. Sometimes I just get multiple pouches or multiple heads of garlic from Aldi or somewhere like that. But I will take them and I'll take the time like I am today and peel all of them and mince them in my food processor. And then I put them into these little cubes over here. And I'll tell you what, you guys, 
You guys have asked me a lot of questions about these. So one of the first questions I will answer is why don't you use a silicone mold? Well, a lot of the small ice cube trays like this, little squares that are silicone, are smaller little squares than those in particular. And I like that size a lot. So that being said, I have stuck with those. I have actually tried to get um, some that were silicone because they would be easier to pop the cubes out. Just a bit easier. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but I just haven't found the right size. So that is answering that question. Now, the next question I have and people have said is how do you get these out of these containers? It's actually very simple. A lot more simple than you might think considering they are plastic, but they are nice and tough. And what I usually do is once the garlic is frozen in here, I take this and I run hot water over the back of it. And then I take something like this, actually I really like using these dishes in particular, and I just take the edges and I go like that and they all usually come out um, once I've ran just a little bit of hot water over the back of them. So all of that to say, I don't mind my process that I have and I'm totally fine with that. Um, and I'm just gonna keep using it the way that I've been. Another thing you can do is you can lay your garlic um, in a Ziploc bag in the freezer, just like all of your minced garlic, just stick it in a Ziploc bag and then lay it very flat. And you can take um, your finger or something that's not too sharp and kind of draw lines on the outside of the bag, like press little grooves in to the bag so that when it's frozen, you can break it apart where you've kind of made these little grooves. That's another way to do it. I feel like that has not been quite as successful for me because um, usually the grooves kind of end up disappearing somehow in the freezer and so I just end up having one big sheet of my garlic or ginger because I do ginger this way too. So I haven't had as much success with that. This system is working for me and I like the fact that I can really control with this size how much garlic I'm using. If I go bigger than this, you know, then I'm stuck with that size. With this size, I can select three little cubes, two little cubes, one little cube, depending on what I'm making. If I'm making like a single serve stir fry for myself for lunch, you know, I might only want one small cube because that was another suggestion. Someone said, you use so many in one recipe, maybe you should just make them into bigger portion sizes. And I'm totally okay with just using what I have here. So the other little tip I have for you in doing garlic or ginger this way is sometimes it's helpful to add just a little bit of water, a couple tablespoons of water to the puree. That way it's easier to kind of press into the molds if you're freezing them. And it's a little bit more, has a little more liquid to it to help you work with it. See this, this skin right here that is totally stuck on here. This is what just, <laughs> really annoys me when I'm cooking a recipe and I have to stop and do this. Hey, everybody has their things that they don't like doing and this is one I do not <laughs> like doing. So what I will do is I'm probably gonna have more garlic here than what will fill these. So I'll probably take some of it and put it into a bag in the refrigerator or a, a jar or something and then um, by tonight or like in a few hours, I may empty the, them out if they're frozen and then refill and just do the batches until they're completely done. And I only have to do this every once in a while, obviously depends on how much garlic I'm using. It may be once a month, it may be once every other month um, that I have to mince all of this up. And let's just get, let's just, I think there needs to be an honorable mention here in the frustration of mincing garlic. And that is, let's talk about cleaning the garlic mincer as well, because that is something that usually does not get clean in my dishwasher. So we sometimes throw it in the dishwasher and then there's like dried garlic 
on the mincer. It's not completely clean. So we still have to wash it by hand. So it's like a whole, it's a whole process to mince garlic. <laughs> and I know some people like to buy it pre-minced. I'm gonna get comments about that, I'm sure. But a lot of that has like a preservative or something added to it and I just want fresh, real garlic. And I feel like it's a whole lot fresher to freeze it than it is to can it or to like somehow have it sitting on in the shelf, on the shelf in the grocery store for who knows how long. And this way I know I'm actually getting fresh garlic and it tastes like fresh garlic. I can't tell any difference in my recipes um, when I freeze it. Okay, a very long time later, <laughs> I have this much garlic peeled. I watched a YouTube video and tried to make myself not think about what I was doing. This is the second bowl of peels off of these. Like it just takes so long. Okay, I'm gonna stop my rant. I'm gonna stop, okay? All right, so I have a little bit of water here. We're gonna just splash it in. And then I'm going to put the top on, turn this on. Um, I think I'm just going to put it on puree. Okay, so since garlic cloves are rather small, I like to go and scrape down the sides because they, they're also really sticky. Garlic, like my fingers were so sticky from peeling those. But um, since they're so sticky, they stick to the sides and then they don't all get chopped up at the same time. So I kind of have to stop it and like check. So I'm just like pulsing it because it's easier to make sure that everything is actually getting minced. That is super garlicky. Kind of making my eyes water. So if you guys have a task that you hate even if it's like somehow in your house with cleaning or something like that, just find a way to hack it like this. <laughs> I'm hacking my, my task of garlic pressing. <laughs> Don't look at all these cloves that are still over here that I just lost the patience to do. <laughs> all right, so I'm just gonna press. I like to use a spoon to do this because I can kind of pack it in and you wanna pile it up on top of the trays so that you can like really press and fill each compartment. The other thing I also like about using the food processor over like a traditional garlic press is that I can get them minced just a little bit smaller than a regular garlic press. So I feel like it disperses more, or yeah, it disperses evenly through my recipes. Um, a little bit better whenever there's smaller pieces. I actually don't even know if this is gonna fill both trays. <laughs> I was hoping, I was hoping I had enough. We're gonna go with it. I'm not peeling any more garlic today. <laughs> Okay, and this step is rather important, especially if you happen to have something in the freezer that is not inside of something, you definitely want to put these in a Ziploc bag because 
they are going to make your freezer smell like garlic. So to help you out, you want to put them inside of something where they can't contaminate the freezer. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put this in there, in the freezer, and then the rest of it I'm going to put into a little container in the refrigerator. All right, friends, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm gonna get all of this put into the freezer. It was such a good freezer meal prep and pantry stock up day. And I know that we are gonna be so thankful for some of these meals on busy days when I need to grab and go. And I was telling my husband about the idea of putting the fajitas in the smoker on the cast iron skillet. And he was like, yes, we've gotta try that. So really, really happy with this love my lemon cake uh, loaf over here so excited to have that as little treats for me and the girls are going to love these muffins as well if you're new here don't forget to subscribe leave me a comment below let me know what your favorite part of this video was or what you're working on this week i love hearing from you all and i'll see you in the next video